Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, just got done watching OTX car down in Atlanta, Georgia. Pretty good car. Pretty good matchups on there. I like the car. I ain't gonna lie. They had some uh, even matchups, you know, even matchups made for an exciting night of boxing. Um, some good close fights. <clears throat> I like what I saw. Um, but the main event, Lorenzo Truck Simpson falls to Vladimir Hernandez by decision. Close the shizzing. I felt like the fight could have been a lot easier. I felt like the fight could have been a lot easier had he boxed Hernandez. The crazy part is when the fight started, what's going on? When the fight started, I liked the game plan. I liked that he was using his legs. I liked that he was using his jab. <clears throat> he was taking his time. You know what I mean? He wasn't trying to do too much. But then it was like after the first 30 seconds of the second round, he, you know, for some reason, found it found it time to, you know, sit inside with uh Hernandez. And I don't know, I don't know what it is about young fighters these days. It's like, it's like they don't study their opponents or they don't care. You know what I mean? It's like they don't care about what they have in front of them. It's just like, I'm going to go out there and do my thing. The reason I say that is because if you fight a guy like Hernandez, yeah, you young, yeah, you strong, yeah, you up and coming, you doing your thing, right? But a guy like Hernandez, you got to break him down. You can't fight his fight. One reason being, you the younger man, he's the older man. Make him use his attributes. Make him use his legs. Make him use his jab. Make him do things he don't want to do. Make him move his head. You know what I mean? Make him have to pick up your timing. When you sit in front of a guy, you kind of place yourself there. And a lot of people may not understand it, but, you know, even though you're not getting hit with clean shots over and over, you're still getting chopped at. Hernandez is letting his hands go. In the middle of the second round, Hernandez is letting his hands go. Truck, Truck still was alert, still was alive. You know what I mean? Still was doing his thing. But you saw where you saw where Hernandez was building confidence. You don't want to do that for a guy that's 34 years old. You know what I mean? He's been battle tested. So you know he's tough. You don't want to give him that kind of space. You know what I mean? I felt like when he was sitting in front of him. Hernandez was just like, all right, I'm going to hit him. I'm going to punch him all over. I'm going to punch him in his shoulders. I'm going to punch him in his elbows, his arms. You know, wherever I can hit him, I'm going to hit him. You know what I mean? And I felt like with Truck Simpson, the boxing was working for him. I think he should have stayed with the boxing for at least four rounds until he slowed his man down, frustrated him. When you stand in front of a guy like Hernandez, a Mexican fighter, a tough fighter, you are, you actually letting him in your front door. You know what I mean? You're giving away everything that you worked hard for, the whole camp that you had. You're giving everything away because that's where he wants you to be. you fighting his fight. Even though you believe you're the stronger guy, and you might be the stronger guy, you might be the better guy, but he's still a man. You know what I mean? He's still a man, so don't sit in front of him like that. Um, so third round come, they get an exchange. Hernandez lands, lands a clean right hook. Now, the right hook didn't hurt. It didn't hurt uh, Simpson too bad, but it shook him up. Yeah, I mean, he felt it. Um, he let us know he felt it, but he, he took a couple steps back. Legs wasn't right up under him. And then when Hernandez pressed him a little bit, he grabbed onto him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he grabbed onto him, held him for a bit, you know what I mean? Got himself together. And then from that moment on, he decided, like, fuck it. I'm not going to use my jab. We're going to fight. So he starts sitting in there, in there with Hernandez. I gave Hernandez, I gave Chuck Simpson one and two. I gave Hernandez three and four. I gave Chuck Simpson five. I gave Hernandez six. Seven and eight. Seven, 
Close round eight. I gave you the Hernandez. Um, really good fight. Appreciate the donation. Really good fight. I don't have nothing really bad to say about either fighter. I just wish, you know what I mean, Truck Simpson went with his smarts on this fight. You know what I mean? Box the man, let him open up, let him make mistakes. You know what I mean? And, and, and capitalize off the mistakes. You know what I mean? Catch him in between the shots, hurt him there, stabbing him to the body with the jab. It was like after the first round, he wasn't really concerned with using his jab. It was just like, I, I'ma just, I'ma just over. I'm gonna just overpower him. Yeah, that one scorecard, 79, 73, was it was a little outrageous for sure. But you gotta remember. All right, so I'm thinking about it too, like that. When I when I when I when I heard that scorecard, I'm like, damn, that is kind of crazy. But let's think about this. You go out there and you win the first round boxing. Immediately after 30 seconds in the second round, you start fighting his fight. I think that's why they called it the way they called it. You know what I mean? I think that's why they called it the way they called it. Because you went from boxing to now you trying to sit inside with them and you taking shots. You don't have to take. You getting hit in spots where you don't have to be getting hit. And the reason we saying that, I'm saying that is because if you saw in the first round, he made the shit easy. He made Hernandez miss easy. You know what I mean? But he got caught up with the, you know, I'm going to go ahead and break him up. I'm going to go ahead and sit in there with him and show him he can't take my shot. And listen, Truck Simpson, he landed some clean shots. He landed some good shots. But the difference was <clears throat> Truck Simpson to land one or two shots. Hernandez throwing five and six back. He throwing five and six back. So this is why they're giving him the rounds because, one, you was beating him boxing, but now you're going to sit inside and try to trade with him. But he beating you now with the output. So, yeah, like, like I said, you might throw three, four. He throwing eight, nine, ten. Three, four, eight, nine, ten back. Three, four, eight, nine, ten. Like one time, Chuck Simpson caught him with a, um, he caught him with a good left hand, a good hook. But right behind that, the ball throw a five-piece back. And once you sitting inside with a fighter of that style, it looked like you lost control. When you was using your legs, when you was using your jab, you know what I mean? It looked like you was in control. It looked like Chuck Simpson was in full control. But once he stopped using his jab, he stopped using his legs, you know what I mean? He made the fight hard. I know that wasn't his intentions. I know that wasn't the game plan. But that's why you got to stay disciplined as a young fighter. The, the young guys don't understand. That's right. You can't hurt everybody. The young guys don't understand that, you know, it's a such thing as we gonna go the distance. Like we gonna go the distance tonight. We gonna fight. So I think I think what happens with these prospects when you building them up, they knocking so many people out, or they or they hitting these dudes, and the reactions they getting is so crazy that they get high off of that. And then as you as you step their level up and you start to put them in front of um, more sturdy opponents, now it's like. They taking, they taking a guy, taking their punch as disrespect. Now it's like, motherfucker, who you think you is? All right, I'm sitting here with you. Ah, ah, now you trading shots, boom, but then you get caught with a shot. And then when you get caught with a shot, you're like, oh, I got to get that back. You know what I mean? That's a young man's way of thinking. Um, can he bounce back? Yeah, he can bounce back. Um, was he, somebody asked in the chat, was he hyped? I really wouldn't say hype. I just, I just would say that the expectations for him was very high because of the camp that he coming out of. You know what I mean? He he he's being raised by the same trainers who raised uh, Javante Tank Davis, and Javante Tank Davis is one of the biggest fighters in the world right now. So I think people are really not so much hype, but just the expectations are very high when it comes to this kid. You know what I mean? And a lot of time, here, here's another thing that people are underestimating and not understanding. These guys, uh, before the fight, they're saying things like, oh, he was a 10-time national champion. And 
you know, he beat this guy in the amateurs. They, that's the amateurs. That's the amateurs. The amateurs, the amateur system is the three round system. That means you gotta be the best of three rounds. You gotta you gotta develop a great three round timing, three round, you know what I mean, breathing patterns. Every, everything is bit built on three rounds. When you start fighting eight three minute rounds, ten three minute rounds, twelve three minute rounds, you gotta prepare for war. And war is just not having guns and using them, it's when to use them. You know what I mean? When do we pull these guns out and when do we use them? I feel like with the, a lot of young fighters, you know what I mean? They just, like I said, they get so used to guys, you know, obeying and being obedient to what they're doing to them in the ring that when they do fight somebody tough, they don't understand. Like, yo, you got to take your time with this ball. This ball beat world champions before. You know what I mean? So, and I know what a young man's way of thinking is like, is like, man, that one me though. I ain't him. Yeah, you not him. Yeah, you not him. But you have to take from his experience. You know what I mean? You got to take from his experience. If, if, you know, I'm trying to think of a way I can make it. Like, if, okay, say it's a seven game series. You know what I mean? It's Jordan versus Magic. It's Jordan's first time. He played against Magic. He sees a different ball game. You got to adjust to the ball game. You can't say, yo, I'm Jordan. I'm better than Magic. I ain't, he old, he an old man. His knee's breaking down. Yeah, but he's still a vet. He's still a vet. You know what I mean? You got to know when to use your guns. You can't go out there. See, these guys, these young guys, they go out there with their biggest gun and they use it early. And then when it comes to fifth, sixth round, it's like, damn, what else am I hitting him with? Truck was winning the fight off the jab. The first round, he'd have been cool. If Truck would have kept, if 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 Truck would have kept boxing through the first three, four rounds, he'd have won easy. But I feel like a lot of guys, too. They don't want to. It takes it takes a thinker to box from the outside. You gotta be a good thinker to box from the outside. And I think a lot of guys they don't get comfortable with the outside because you have to think. On the inside, it's more of a feeling. It's more of a feeling. Like when you can see Chuck, he was getting away from little shit on the inside. Boom! He kept throwing that left uppercut and um, bringing that right hook back and that sharp straight left hand, and it was getting through at times. But that's because he could feel. The times when Hernandez was trying to relax. But from the outside, where a guy is pressuring you, you gotta be able to think. You gotta be able to set traps. And a lot of guys, they don't wanna, they don't wanna go that deep. But that's why they call boxing the sweet science. You gotta take your time and break a motherfucker down. Especially a tough motherfucker. Come on, man. You gotta pay respects to guys' records. And soon as see, what's wrong with the young fighters is. As soon as they see a guy got losses, they, they confident. They're like, all right, fuck it. He ain't going to beat me. Yeah, but who did he lose to and who did he beat? That's what matter. That's what matter. You got to take your time in there. You can't go in there rushing thinking you know everything, thinking everything is going to go your way. It get tough in there. No, I don't got a set schedule. I just get it done. I just get on here when I can. Yeah, you got to control him with the jab. And Truck Simpson was winning the fight off of the jab. I feel like he, he was making the fight easy. But when he decided, you know, all right, I'm bigger than this guy. I'm stronger than this guy. I'm going to sit inside. I'm going to rip at him. You good. I'm going to sit inside. I'm going to rip at him. I'm going to do what I want to him. You got to kill these old head Mexican boxers, man. They don't play around when they get in that ring. Shaking my head, seeing it every week. You know, these young fighters. Yeah, but you see, see how you saying kill them? It's a way to kill them, though. You don't got to blow everybody up to kill them. You can kill a guy with poison. You know what I mean? And with poison, he dies over time. You know what I mean? You can kill him being a sharpshooter. You could be a sniper. You can get right up on him. And get him out of here. You can stab him. You can push him off a ledge. There's it's plenty of ways. You can drown him. 
You know what I'm saying? I didn't predict it any kind of way because I really haven't been up on the fight. I I, I really tuned in to who he was fighting last week, and then I double-checked today, and I was like, damn, I remember when Bull beat J-Rock. Got to bleed him slow. You feel me? You know what I mean? So when I was watching the fight, I wasn't trying to make a prediction. I was more like, let me see how this thing turned out. You know what I mean? And fighters, I feel like the fighters, man, you got to stay disciplined. You got to stay disciplined, man. You got to stay disciplined in the gym. Your sparring got to be real sparring. I think, I think he kind of just felt like he was going to overpower this guy. Boots beating Villa is the blueprint. But Boots, if you remember that fight, Boots stay behind the jab. You got a jab, man. You got to use your jab. The jab going to tell you everything you want to know. It is taught, but a lot of these fighters don't listen. I'm telling you what it is. It's when you get guys easy fights. Back to back to back to back to back. When you do that back to back to back, they get high off their own power. You know what I mean? They start thinking they the only motherfucker who walk around that could punch. They start thinking they the only motherfucker walking around with a chin. They start thinking they the only motherfucker walking around with speed. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to also be honest. A lot of these guys, too, that's turning pro, that won these uh, national titles, yeah, they was on a kid level. They was winning national titles as 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds. 16 rules, yeah, but only a few of these guys have been to the top level as an amateur being the Olympics, you know what I mean? A guy like Shakur, a guy like Keyshawn, those guys know what it's like. Andre Ward, Floyd Mayweather, those guys, been in the, they've been around the world, and they know what it's like to be in there with an awkward motherfucker that's strong. Now, when you turn pro, this is why every fight can't be easy, because when you take too many easy fights, you get big-headed, and you start thinking, can't nobody do nothing to you. You know what I mean? Gee, man, I swear you can market your boxing IQ. You dropped the gym, gym with that outside thinking theory and your inside feeling theory word. No, that's real shit. But that's because I fought. I, I, I know what it's like. I'm trying to tell motherfuckers. One thing about me, my career didn't go the way I would like it to go, have gone. But, it, you know, that don't mean I didn't learn anything from boxing. I, I definitely was a student. And I, and I still am a student of the game. I love boxing. I do. But, you know what I mean, to try to explain that to a lot of guys now, they don't get it because, you know, they just want to go out there and just get a knockout. They just want to go out there and get a highlight. They just want to go out there and, and make it look pretty. You know what I mean? And then, and then go buy some, you know, some new sneakers or something. It's, it's, it's really bullshit. If you want to be great at this shit here, man, you got to study. And, and Chuck really, he didn't lose, like, just got his ass whooped. He didn't get his ass whooped. He kind of just gave that fight away on some real shit. Because him sitting inside didn't look right because he was the taller, bigger man. So he boxed him and beat him up. So I felt like when he sat inside, he gave away so many, you know what I mean? You can hear me now? All right, I'm good now. I'm good now. All right, my bad. My son just called me. Gee, do you think it was truck inability to make adjustments in experience or just bad corner advice? No, I think, I think you got to understand. All right, right. Listen. When Truck when Truck was doing his thing in his amateurs, he was overpowering a lot of kids, a lot of amateurs. He overpowering them. So 
as a pro, not understanding the level of guys you fighting, you overpowering these guys, and you do it so many times, and you get a couple knockouts and shit like that, and you do it so many times that you like, that you like, you like, man, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a beast. I'm going to do what I want to this guy. Not understanding Hernandez is built for tough. You know what I mean? So, you, it wasn't so much that he didn't, he didn't listen or he just lost. He just gave his, he gave everything away. He went out there and made it easy the first round. Boxing, jab, feet, head movement, making him miss. Short little clean shots he was landing. But it was like he wasn't satisfied with that. It was like, no, let's get to the real shit. But it was too early. That's why timing is everything too. You know what I mean? Timing got to be. Timing got to be right. You mean you got to slow a guy down. You got to remember, he might not be training how you train, but he's still training. You know what I mean? He might not be undefeated like you undefeated, but he's still hungry. You know what I mean? That guy won that fight, and the first thing he said, man, I want a title shot. He hung, He hungry. He know that that's going to get him to the big bucks. You feel me? So these young guys, they got to be mindful of that. Like, yo, yeah. I'm, I'm working hard, and yeah, I'm great at what I do, but it's another motherfucker out there that's hungry, too. You know what I mean? I trip out at all these, when all these YouTube people try and box, and once they fight, a little average boxer, they lose. But, you know... One thing, one thing you gotta understand when you fight a guy who who has experience, you know what I mean. You gotta use your ability and you gotta keep it basic. Once you start trying too much, they pick up on it. You gotta remember, fighters are animals, so they sense things. You know what I mean? They sense things that the normal person wouldn't be able to sense. And when Young Boy sat inside, Hernandez knew exactly what he was thinking. Oh, he think he going to just outwork me. He think he going to just overpower me. So you see Hernandez just touch, touch, touching. Boom. Touch, touch. Boom. Boom. Touch, 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 touch. Touch, touch, touch. Boom. Boom, boom. He was, it, was, it was crazy, bro, watching it. And then Truck looking for one big shot just to turn the fight around because that's what he used to seeing. You know what I mean? I heard a trainer say boxing is the manipulation of time and distance to control a fight. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. I gotta make I gotta fuck with your mind. That's why that's why the build up and all the shit talking and the arguing and all of that shit. That's why all of that plays a part. But then it don't mean shit. Cause when you get in there, you gotta show me. You gotta show me. I think it's good for these young guys to take L's when they coming up. Shows you can learn and keep building. Sorry to say, he bounced right back or come back next year. Also, your opinion, Trayvon Marshall. I think Trayvon Marshall, Trayvon Marshall just in that fight, I felt like he just was in over his head. Two-time Olympian, grown man. Trayvon Marshall, 22 years old, young kid. Didn't really understand the speed uh, and the power, uh, you know, of his opponent. And, you know, he got caught looking, looking. Deer in headlights a little bit. You feel me? Game plan versus amount of rounds. If it's 10 versus 8 versus 12 rounds, go do what works. Renzo team should have picked the European to beat. You know what I mean? I think, I think to be honest, whoever match make this fight, they knew what they was doing because this was going to tell us a lot about Lorenzo Simpson. And, and really what it just told me is he hard-headed. Because I heard Calvin and them tell him, make it easy. Box the guy. Stop trying to fight the guy. You don't got to do that. You got trainers for a reason. Got to listen to him. I mean, eight times out of ten, your trainer going to tell you the right shit. You know what I mean? But on another note, that was a great card, though. That was a great card. Gee, what would you work on with Truck to improve? I would work on his patience. His patience. Him 
And I would have him trust in his boxing ability, working on his paces and trusting his boxing ability. You ain't got to go in there and rumble everybody. Trayvon in love with rumbling too much, needs patience. Soon as he gets touched, the game plan goes out the window. That's what I'm speaking on with Chuck. Same thing. Same problem last fight. He just don't listen. I think he just, you know, he's so used to doing what he do to motherfuckers. He, he, it, it's not sitting in his mind like, yo, you're not going to knock everybody out, bro. What big fights do you want to see next? I don't know, but it's some good fights tomorrow. Gee, man, I got to ask you this. As a coach, how do you prepare a fighter for a fight when you know your fighter doesn't have the tools to beat the other fighter? Um, What you try to do is you make them believe in themselves, first of all, confidence. Second of all, the things that will keep them from getting hurt, those are the things you mainly focus on, keeping him, keeping him out of trouble. You know what I mean? If you know the guy, the other guy got a lot more ability, Faster, stronger, and all that type of shit. So what you want to do with your guys, you know what I mean? You want to work on things to keep them from getting hurt. Um, also, you mean just working on the good basics. Developing his punches to make sure he's turning his punches over. Placing his shots. You know what I mean? Things that's going to mean something. Offset movement. You know what I mean? Try to offset the other guy. Timing. Shit like that. Usyk versus Dubois. I think Usyk just going to outbox Dubois and possibly stop him in the 10th round. That's my breakdown for that. There's only so much trainers can do at the end. That's true. Canelo about to hurt Charlo and Spud. Real talk. Who's Spud? <laughs> Chuck beat himself tonight. That's how I feel. I don't feel like he really like lost. I just, I just think he fought the wrong fight. How would you formulate a strategy in an uphill or zero chance situation? Would you tell your fighter the truth or persuade him he got a chance? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Good amateur, terrible pro. I wouldn't say terrible. What do you think about Boots versus that guy that beat Trayvon Martin? I think Boots is just too smart for that type of guy. That guy, wow, super aggressive, but I think Boots too smart for him. I think Boots are out him in like six rounds because he opened up too much. Matias versus Tio, great fucking fight. I hope they do fight one day. Do you think success is coming too fast for fighters in this era? It's not the success is that's coming too fast. It's the hype. The hype is coming too fast. They're, everybody got a cameraman. Everybody got a jeweler. Everybody got the fucking race car. Everybody got a girl. Every, it, it's just too much. Everybody got designer clothes. It's just too much. It's too much. And the reason I'm saying all that is too much. None of that shit has to do with a fight. You could go in there. You can go in there. You can go in the ring, right? And you could wear the same shit Sugar Ray Robinson and them used to wear. A black and white pair of trunks. A black pair of boots. And go in there and beat this shit out of somebody. You know what they're going to remember? They're going to remember that ass whooping. They're not going to remember what you had on. They're not going to care. The fight was on the zone. Yeah, motherfucker got three fight. He go get a gold chain. A little corny ass joint too. Low ass chain. Joint be corny as shit. Or they go buy a little ass Gucci outfit or something. It should be ass for real. I tell my young boys all the time, females don't have sex with clothes, bro. Y'all got to stop that. You made me a lot of money, champ. Your insights are next level best on YouTube. Ain't never boxed a day in my life. And now I feel like boots in this. <laughs> hey, yo, if I made you a lot of money, I mean, you owe me a lot of money. What's up, man? Get with me. T. Rich, talk to me, bro. Hit my cash app. I appreciate the donation as well. Thank you, sir. Why don't fighters wear tassels on their shoes anymore? Like Roy and Ray Leonard they had way more style and swag. I don't know. I guess they look at it as an old head thing. You know what I mean? 
game change. You know how it go. All I be interested in is somebody getting the ass whooped. I don't care about all that cool shit. It's like boxing boy wasn't right. It's like he wanted to beat him the fuck up, but he didn't have to do that. He could have, and he probably still could have. He probably still could have stopped him, but just made it look clean. But I always knew he wasn't going too far to be slow and drowsy type fighter since I seen him. I think being inactive is hurting a lot of these young prospects. That's true too. The zone have been a little funny with the fights and the L's when the main boxer has advantage versus trying to go for the KO. Play the long game. Yo, but you know the crazy thing is the zone just the network. The promoters for this joint is overtime. So whoever running overtime and matchmaking for their fighters, that's who put it together. The zone is just the network. They just the ones allowing us to see it. Fighters got to have chains in the flyers, women. All that matters when you taking a power shot. All that matters when you, no. That's how you get your ass whooped. And then the chick that you, you try to show off for, you know what she going to do. Say slide. She going to choose. She going to go fuck with the next prospect. And the, and the fighters, I mean, and the girls know that now. The young bucks. They know that now that the, that the, that the, the young boys they like trading girls, so they so they be trying to fuck with their head, see who going spend the most money on them and who going act stupid over them. These young boys dumb for real. That's why you got to keep solid, good solid people around you, man. Cause they be like, bro, get her out right of here. Mello Mello was standing up trying to tell truck. With the dude like he know boxing. <laughs> he probably say, shit, I watch it enough. I'm just playing, Mr. Haggard. It's too funny watching young fighters sometimes. Yeah, I just want them to just tighten up, man. They got to understand. I the, the biggest disrespect, though, is just thinking that you're going to just knock everybody out. You don't go like that. Like, you don't go like that. Like, no, that's not the game. I appreciate everybody tapping in too, man. It's late night. We got 182 people here, and it's damn near one in the morning, Eastern time. 50 likes, donations. We got ginger snaps. It's going down. Fuck with me. How did everybody know about the fight but me? Because you got to tune in. You got to get ESPN. <coughs> You got to get the zone. You got to get showtime. And you're going to be good. Shout out to the UK, man. That's where the teachers comes in. They're fighting discipline and straight. Yeah, but they got to listen. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. If Canelo reflexes have slipped, he loses to Mel. Can you put me on to game with the shorties in boxing? I'm up next, so I need to know this toy been in, this toy been in the game for a minute. Man, hit me in my DM, man. Nah, ginger snaps, old man snaps. Who you think you talking to right now? I'm really not 36. I'm really like 65. I'm an old ass man, bro. Real shit. I'm really an old man. If you were a manager and you were and your fighter deserves title shot, how would you enforce it with everybody cutting in line? Like they are doing. Honestly, I would just play. I would just play, sit back, and I would peep and see who the weakest link is. And I'm shooting for the weakest link. Now, how are you going to make that happen? I ain't going to lie. I don't know because boxing get crafty when you get in that top 10. When you get in that top 10, this shit get real crafty. And, and, and y'all might know that. And some of y'all may not. But it get, it get real super crafty. So... I'm going to just play the shallow waters and, you know what I mean? I'm going to see who's slipping up crazy. You want ginger snaps up a little bit. The more slap. <laughs> it's 
So G, I got here late. What you think about the truck fight? I think he just fought the wrong fight. He went out there and he boxed beautifully in the first round. And then after 30 seconds, he tried too hard to fight. Like he just wanted to fight with the guy. I don't know why. Would you ever want your son to be a fighter? Both of my sons trained before. One of them got four, three or four fights. It it really it really got to be up to them. Like honestly though, because I don't want the headache. Because I'm like crazy in the gym, and then it would drive me more crazy if it's my kids. So, the truck look like tank style wise. Nah, they do they do similar things because they come from the same camp. But he didn't look like he nah. Truck got his own style. Top 10, that's when the politics come into play. Heavy. Really, really, it'd be like the top, the top 20. For real, for real, for real, for real, it'd be like the top 20. But the 10, the top 10, crafty, super crafty. That's why Shakur should be celebrated for his discipline and good conduction outside the ring so far. Anyway, I mean, Shakur had his young, his young man days too. But he smartened up. Yeah. Boo Boo cut the dreads. He definitely on demon time. Boo Boo cutting the dreads definitely look like demon time. I mean, he coming to work. I mean, he coming to be slick too. Somebody wrote me the other day. They said, yo, AG, if you serious about, first of all, he called my subscribers. He called them followers. I don't like that. They subscribers. And I call them the people. But he going to call my subscribers. He going to call them followers and going to say, if you want more followers, you got to stop eating on the live. I said, what, nigga? If my subscribers fuck with me, if my followers fuck with me, they gonna want me to eat more. Fuck is you talking about? I'm hungry. Get out my face, chump. <laughs> Who would I like to see Boots fight? Um, Thurman. Porter. What's my man name? What's the little shirt boy? He was supposed to fight um Virgil Ortiz. Um, what's my guy name? Damn. Ruffin boy. I watched the interview with Zab and Mav Hoffa. He said Don King paid him 100K for that Corey Spinks fight. I'm about to go back and watch that joint. But Don King wild for that. Come on, man. That's that's the type of shit that was going on. Let's be real. Who said some whole ass shit like that? I forgot, bro. He wrote it in the comments, though. What you think about Bruce Shushu character as a fighter? Let me tell y'all about Shushu, man. Shushu always believed in himself. That's first of all. I met Bruce Shushu Carrington when he was 11. I think he was 11 years old. I was fighting in New York. And his dad had him at the show. And after the fight, his dad had him take a picture with me. And then his dad took me outside to his truck. And he had posters of um, Shushu in his truck. And he gave me one. And I got Shushu to sign it for me. Shushu always knew he could fight. He always knew he'd be special. And he really is a student in the game. Not the hardest puncher, but one of the sharpest young boxers in the game right now. And, a, and he's an accomplished uh, amateur, for sure. One of the best amateurs on the world level. Not just national level, on the international level. You feel me? Nah, we cool with the platters. How important is, is is discipline in boxing? It's the most important thing ever. G, you got to start promoting. Yeah, Stanny Onis. I want to see Boots and Stanny Onis. Who is the best jeweler? I don't know. I don't wear jewelry. 
I wear Casios, bro. That's what I wear. I wear Casio. That's it. I don't wear jewelry. I never really liked jewelry. Boots I have or standing on this for Boots. Best boxing channel on YouTube. And you don't even know how to work the app that well. Imagine when you catch up. <laughs> Real shit, I'm on your ass. As soon as I get me a, a app hack, it's over for all you motherfuckers. You know, I just realized you one of the best readers on live. These niggas be punch drunk readers. <laughs> when Boots move to 154, you see somebody taking over. Walk the way or it'll be new 160 until Devin Ryan to you. Get up there. I don't know. That's a good question. Man, I just, I'm just waiting to see what happens. How truck lose? I just got here and didn't catch the fight. I saw a clip. He got hurt in the third round. He just, he just fought the wrong fight. He sat in the inside with the guy, and the guy just outworked him, to be honest. Her name that just outworked him. Dude, it, the punch rate was like, it was like three to, three to eight. Who got the nicest chain in boxing? I don't know. They said, get the lights up. What y'all doing? I think Gary Antoine will get his shot early next year. I ain't gonna lie. Slick boxing is boring. What's that? What's slick boxing? What you mean? What you mean? All right, we got another question. Can you explain why it's a difference between Blu-ray Earl and no Blu-ray Earl? I am not a boxer, but from my eyes, I see huge difference. No Blu-ray Earl did win fights, but the power wasn't the same. First of all, Lawrence RBA, I appreciate the love. Second of all, honestly, what I heard was, and from what I seen, Blu-ray is a vicious motherfucker in that gym when it comes to the strength and conditioning. I don't know what they went through as a team. I don't know why he's not there anymore. But I think Blu-ray gives him that push that he need for the big fights. If that is true, they need to work it out with Blu-ray and get him back in there. Because if you think about it, Earl Spence is a bull. By bull, I mean a bull, like an animal, a bull. He pushes his opponents. But if he don't have that same type of strength or that same type of demeanor or that same type of uh, aggressiveness or that same type of uh, drive or determination, if he don't have that, then I feel like he's not the same. Maybe Blu-ray was that next piece that he needed. I don't know. That's interesting, though. Hear what he mean? Antoine need to stop turning down shots. Maybe if, if that is true, maybe he feel like he's not ready yet. He, he do only got 17 fights. But they are not probably. And he's been in there with some good fighters. He can't do that shit no more. Gee, that car accident took too much off that dude. That's why I bet the way I did. Will Charlo go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Canelo? At some point, he will. At some point, he will. Mel needs to bring that lion hat. That lion hat to the Canelo fight. He should walk to the ring, ride on the lion <laughs> And that'll be his last walk he ever fucking took. <laughs> ah, fuck you talking about. Will Charlo go to? I read that. Chant much love from Baltimore. Fuck it is, Bert. I know I fuck with Baltimore. What's up with Terry Farmer? Try and get back. Try and see what's up. Chad back in the mix. 
Did you see where Devin said T.O. not the guy at 140, but Regis is? What you think? I think they both dangerous. But T.O. is new to 140. I think T.O. got two or three fights at 140. So that might be what Devin mean. Regis been at 140 his whole career. So that might be what Devin mean. That might be what he's saying. Like he really the guy because he really been holding 140 down for a longer time. I'm trying to get the crumbs out. Crumbs are the best part. Mm hmm. Fat bullshit. All right, we back. I'm not feeling Jamel's attitude towards Canelo. I'm rooting for Mel all day, but I ain't betting. Smart man. Read this fight real smooth. <clears throat> yeah, Baltimore in the house and Philly, y'all brothers. Fuck with it. Ah, <laughs> since truck lost tonight, who is the best American middleweight prospect coming up? American middleweight prospect. I know the boy Amo Williams is tough. I like him. I like that boy, Amo Williams. Um, let me see. There got to be a few of them. I got to think. They got to sit here and think, man. I'm getting old. I think Matias the best at 140. He might be. He might be. I swear the truck coming back stronger. I think he will. I think he learned a valuable lesson in this fight. Like 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 somebody said earlier, sometimes these dudes got to take a loss so they can understand a few things. It's a sweet science. It's a science to this shit, shorty. Fuck. <laughs> True, I think T.O. got a claim since he beat Josh Taylor, but it did look like he was slipping a little after the Catterall fight and the layoff with the injury. If not a T.O. fan, I'm not a T.O. fan, but by the way, it's just it's just the truth. Troy Osley. Troy Osley tough. I think Troy Osley get caught up in the banging shit too, though. He just seems like he is too big for his body to me. It's like he can't move, real shit. <laughs> said the Baltimore accent on point. I fuck with Baltimore, man. Baltimore got some cool. Baltimore just like Philly though. We got some crazy shit going on, but then we got some cool motherfuckers. Like I mean, well, I guess it's like that all over the world. But Baltimore, I mean, they know what we go through because we close. Shit, like an hour and a half away. What steps would you take when you put a fighter, your coaching back on the comeback trail? That has been recently stopped in his last few outings. Last few? That means he need to get back to some light touches and, and get to working on his game. Can you say Maya need to calm down by Selena Gomez? Can you say Maya? I don't know what that is. I don't even know. Who's Selena Gomez? Who the hell is that? Benavidez versus Better BF at 175. That would be firewood. Teal knocks out Devin. Damn. Do what it do. Fuck. <laughs> yo, yo, bro. Why my eyes look just like yours in the thumbnail? What the fuck, my boy Lorenzo lost? Yeah. Lost that John, man. He, he just fought a stupid fight. I'm going to just say that. He didn't really like get his ass whooped. He just was, he just was fight trying to sit on the inside with a Mexican. You can't be doing that. I mean, you could do that, but you got to understand what come with that. I mean, when you if you're gonna sit inside with a Mexican ball, understand you're gonna get your shit banged on a little bit. Hey, did you see Carmel Moulton fight in the amateur fight with Shakur Stevenson cousin? Yeah, I did watch that fight. Oh. Uh, Excuse me. I'm sorry, y'all. Catterall versus Matias. I think that's a bad style matchup for Matias. I gotta check Catterall out. I think I only remember City what time. 160 division full of contenders, <clears throat> no champions for real. Everyone there is climbing to the top. Nobody beats Shakur at 135. Nicole Bowles, hey, hey. Salute, Greg. How you think Bud versus Boots will play out? Bud and Boots. Bud and Boots would be a chess match for probably six to eight rounds. I ain't going to lie. 
It'll probably be a, a, a fight like Bud and Boots is going to come down to the last four rounds. Because I think the respect level, I'm going to be honest. I'm being really honest right now. I think the respect level is going to be high on both sides. Like, both of them know, you know what I mean? This ain't a motherfucker you play with. But they both crazy. They both crazy. So the last, I think the respect level will be there. They'll be shooting at each other, but it's going to be respectful shit. And I just think that last round, I mean, the last four rounds, that's where it's going to be like, mm, see who really won it. You got to see who really won it, ladies and gentlemen. And I got to work some amateur fights tomorrow. This shit crazy. And I got to work amateur fights tomorrow. Truck made me mad. I don't know why he ain't just box. He had the ball easy. I ain't gonna lie, Greg. You need your own network. You making this box analysis and breakdown interesting, and want to watch you. Thank God, bro. Jersey, appreciate that. We gonna get it pop, man. Somebody told me Bud versus Booth would be like McCullough versus James Tony. I think that's a great comparison. Possibly, I want to see Gary Russell and Tevin Farmer get it in. That would be interesting. Greg, how can, how can Shakur not get hit by those bombs? Tank be thrown for 12 rounds. Shit, he got to be on point. Got to be perfect. He got to be perfect. <laughs> hey, yo, when you fucking with Tank, you got to be perfect. And it's hard to be perfect. You hear me? When you fucking with Tank, man, you got to be perfect. I ain't going to lie. Tank, you got to push him. You got to wrap him. You got to spin him. You got to jab him. You got to do a lot to tank, man. You can't play with that boy. You got to be perfect. <laughs> Tyson vapes are fire. I ain't never had a Tyson joint. I be watching out for Tyson. Matter of fact, I'm looking for my, my charger. Where my charger at? Niggas, niggas man, touch touching shit. Fuck. I'm from Jersey, but I got Tank KO and Shakur. Tank and box real good. Hey, we playing would be more. Hey, we playing would be more action. But we gotta get Boozy to chill on the on the Yamins. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, you gotta remember, Bo, old man though. So that shit in there, bro. That shit ain't going nowhere. Yeah, you know I mean, uh, uh, yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> who would have won back in 2014, Jamel or Bubo? I think Boo Boo would have got him better boxing. Shakur versus Tio, who wins? That's a good man. I think I think Shakur. I mean, I think Tio got a good punch too, but Shakur he just be frustrating and shit out of people. And if Tio get frustrated with Shakur and then get tired, that shit gonna get bad for him, cause that shit gonna get real bad, like really bad, like dark, 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 like like locked him in the basement, dark. Like, have him down there like, where am I? What's next? Is anybody there? You feel me? I'm bored by y'all. Out your, I'm out your face. Nicole Bowles, good evening. Have a good night. Plus, T.O. cuts real easy. Shakur would beat T.O. T.O. can't go forward. And Shakur will make him. No, Coach L is. Coach L is king, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, your mindset got to be right to fight Shakur for real. Real shit. What happened in, in Lorenzo? I told y'all he just. He just. Uh, just fought the wrong fight. Sat inside with a Mexican that was willing to work. Shouldn't have did that. I'm about to get another bag. I'm about to snag a bag. Cepeda, a tough fight for a hit chance. He is, but but it could end up being easy fight. But no fight is easy, but it could be easier than we think. But then he is a tough fight, though, because he's crafty. Watch your court not making the big fights. It's not... I'm a, I'm a, all right, listen to y'all. I mean, listen, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all something. I like Usyk. I'm going to tell y'all something. Listen, the fighters... Listen to me clear. The fighters do not call the shots. Trust me. So when you be listening to fighters and they be, oh, I made that fight. I'm listening. The fighters do not call the shots. Trust me when I tell you. 
it's rare that you get a situation like Spence and Bud, and they didn't even make that fight, but they made that fight. But they didn't even make that fight. But trust me, the fighters do not make the fights. I really think we hyping Core up a little too much. He ain't had not one test period, even down on little guys. I think he has had some tests. The thing is, Shakur just, he just a different dude, man. Long ago, there was a man who entered the karate dojo naked and left with a whole wardrobe. That's funny as shit. Do you know when Boots will fight next? No. Boots probably fight like November. Probably like November. November, December. Shakur wasting his career? I don't think it's Shakur's fault. Gotta be careful who you deal with sometimes. Shakur just aced those tests. I would agree. I think guys like Valdez, Jamel Harry. Uh, what was the what was the Brazilian boy name? He had, he had some good ones. He just was whooping on them motherfuckers. Man, Valdez, medium on paper. He was a test, but honestly, he's a mismatch. Yeah, but you got to respect him. Valdez was the Olympian as well. It's not like he's just some fucking guy. You know what I mean? These dudes be real dudes. They just, Shakur just, his boxing ability. Why Philly trainers don't teach the shell no more? Who told you that? I just, I, I, I teach it, but I teach it to motherfuckers who listen. But I don't like teaching it to any and everybody because they fight like that. And then they be getting cracked upside their fucking head. Cool boy bought with this four million. I don't know, bro. I don't be in nobody's pockets, bro. Because I don't want nobody in mine. Because then I had to do something to you. And I don't want to do that. I'm trying to be a good motherfucker. I'm trying to chill. I think we getting a tomato can if Boots fight again this year. Nigga scared of that smoke. Not but. <clears throat> no, I think they're going to find something good. But I got Tank stopping him 10 rounds. Let me show patience he needs against Barrios. True. Who's the most famous boxer you train? Probably Gabe Rosado. Gabe. Because me and Gabe, y'all talking about stories. <laughs> I got some, I got some Gabe Jones. Ooh, hey. I got some Gabe Jones, man. When you walk around with Gabe, man, man, I'm trying to tell you, Gabe real life is it on some real shit, though. On some real shit. I'm not hyping nothing up. Boy really is a star, bro. Like, he be walking down the street. I remember, all right, I'm going to tell you, oh, John, one time, one time we was at Universal Studios, right? We walking and shit. A motherfucker had his girl and three kids with him. And the, the youngest was like a baby, bro. This boy ran from his family. He ran away from his family, ran up on Gabe and said, yo, he said, yo, ain't you Gabe Rosado? He said, yeah, man. What's up? But he said, yo, can I take a picture with you? His wife, like, spinning around looking for him, like, fuck, he just go. He over there taking a picture with Gabe, bro. I'm in the, I don't think I had some popcorn, so I'm sitting there eating the popcorn. I'm like, yo, that's some crazy shit, bro. Taller don't mean bigger, because like y'all and hearing what's up. String beans, no punching power. <laughs> Why y'all going at my man Jamel Herring like that? Jamel Herring just old oh, head. He just couldn't keep up. That's all. I met Gabe at Staples Center. He cool. Yeah. Gabe cool as shit. He funny as shit. I got some funny ass Gabe stories though, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Wait, were you in the Gabe's corner? No, I wasn't in that corner. 24 Triple G. I was with Gabe when he fought. Um, he fought in the BKB the first time against. Uh, I forgot my guy name, bro. He beat the Mexican boy. Then I was in this corner that night when he fought David Lemieux in New York. And then I was in this corner when he fought in BKB again and when he fought uh, Curtis Stevens. And they ducking boots like they did Winky Wright back in the day. Hey, that might be true. 
I don't know. Shit getting crazy. I like Jamel, but he got he got did it the same way against Ortiz. What you mean? Ortiz. What you talking about? You think everyone on PDs for real? Helene is tested positive. Helene is tested positive? After he just got put to sleep? Oh shit. I think I think a lot of people are. I don't think everybody is, but I think a lot of them are on some shit. But I don't think everybody, you know what I mean, get busy like that. But Boo should fight Tim Zoo. I think that fight gonna happen one day. I think that fight gonna happen one day in the future. Damn, it's 120 in the morning. Y'all niggas tripping. Y'all got me on a late night. The fuck? Connor Ben beats Ennis. Hey, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't see that happening, but if that's what you believe, Connor Ben is a fucking wheelbarrow. Crazy, right? Boo should go to 154, beat Tim Zhu, but into a fight. Force butt into a fight. Interesting game plan. I'm looking forward to seeing Raymond Murata and Edward De Los Santos fight. Some of the black 135 fighters. True. Jermaine Ortiz busted Jamel up pretty bad. Too. He just ain't get the stoppage. Kind of been get stopped or washed by boots. Dylan White tested positive. He got pulled out of the AJ fight. And Helene is popped dirty after the AJ fight. Wow. That's crazy. Boots probably going to fight the tomato can again. I don't know what music you listening to. I like old shit, bro. I like, I like, I be listening to old R&B. Real shit of Will Barrel. Push him right out the way. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Niggas out here on TV trying to act crazy. Whole time he acting like he a champ. Oh, all this hype crazy shit. Whole time you let motherfuckers stick needles in you. But yeah, we got something for that, though. We got a whole lot of something for that. Mm-hmm. I think Ortiz can beat Core. Boots will beat kind of bend the fuck up. Fidax. That's a fit of the Fuck you talking about. Kind of Ben is a fucking punch buggy. No punch back. Fuck you talking about. Kind of been a fucking crackhead. You talking about Boots still a prospect at 27. Stop that, man. Boots not even 27. If Shakur can't get Lobo or Cruz, I want to see him in you know, Ortiz or Santos. Real shit. Mason Pena was popping. Shout out to everybody in here, man. Appreciate y'all, too. Think Lorenzo lost? Yeah, I think he lost. I think he lost because he fought the wrong fight after thinking about it. He he could have made that fight a lot more easier. Shakur said this this is his later year, his last year with top rank. You see him going to PBC? Absolutely. That's where the rumble's at. Where you see the 126 division ending up at once everyone start fighting. I think Raymond Ford gonna run down on the 126. Frank Martin and Shakur, good fight on paper, but after Martin's last fight, he got to work on some stuff. I appreciate everybody, man, for tapping in, man. Get with me. You said I'm tripping. Tank versus everybody. We want smoke. You my guy, though. I've been following you for almost three years. You smart as shit. Appreciate that. If you think or if you think, if you think you or tease. Beat Shakur, you don't know shit about boxing. Oh, this core last year, I don't, I didn't know that. Best exits after throwing the right hand. It depends if you in there with a hooker, you touch it with the right hand, you roll out. If you in there with a short hooker, you like to throw short hooks, touch it with the right hand, you catch. If you in there with a motherfucker that like to trade right hands, Touch with the right hand, slip outside or slip inside. You can slip inside and touch that liver. Or if you like to shoot straight jab, boom, touch him, boom, slip outside, boom, come back with the right. I ain't got it. I ain't gonna have me on here teaching, man. Y'all niggas tripping. Will Tank ever fight Crawford? I don't think that's gonna happen. 
you think the same about boxing, but I ain't going to lie. I was against you on the Earl fight. No, that's cool, man. I understand how shit go. I don't be worried about that. I don't take none of this shit personal unless a motherfucker, you know what I mean, you act crazy in person. You inter Your interviews keep that other YouTube channel alive. That's my guy. That's my man, Mill. We stuck. We stuck like Shaq and Kobe. Even though they ain't like each other, they had to be, they had to get it done. Alex, what big body person you seen Kuro fight that makes the one thing, the one, the one that be interviewing Booze. That's my man Mill from YSM. Shout out to YSM Sports Media. That's my guy. He the one that really, really pushed me to be doing this shit right here. Cause I used to be like, Mill. I'm not trying to be doing that shit, bro. I'll be in the gym all day, bro. I started boxing three years ago. I might get back into it for fun just to get my mind back right. I'm 26 now. I'm not going pro. Man, just get back in the gym. Stay healthy. Stay sharp. You never know what can happen, bro. I knew Bud was the better fighter. I just wanted Earl to win. I can respect that. Hey, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Greg Hackett, man. And for those who would like to show love... <coughs> Show love through donation. My cash app in the description. Also, those who would like to show love through grabbing the newest, freshest merchandising. Um, there's a link in the descriptions as well. I appreciate y'all. You know what I mean? Greg Hackett 86 on Instagram. Greg Hackett 215 on X, aka Twitter. Greg Hackett on Facebook. Get with me, man. If you don't fuck with me, don't fuck with me. But if you fuck with me, keep fucking with me. We're going to keep building. I tried to do the videos from the basement, but I be getting tired in the basement. So I had to come back upstairs. You feel me? But I fucked with y'all. Thank you. My bad, y'all. Get with me. <laughs>